Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be answering the question that I get asked quite frequently here on this channel. And that is, what is the most important component on a speed run car that I should be paying attention to? Now just to put a little bit of context behind this, ultimately what someone is interested in is they're either going to build a car for the first time or they're upgrading a power system and they want to know what should they focus on. What is that most important part of the power system within these top speed run cars? This is the question that we're going to be answering here in the video. And let me tell you this, it's not an easy question to answer because here's the thing. Let's just get it right out in the open right now. If you're running a speed run vehicle, the most important component within your system is your entire system. The entire power system is going to be very relevant in order to deliver maximum top speed. And the reason why this is true is because if you get the best brushless motor, that brushless motor is only going to be as good as the electronic speed control that can feed it. The brushless motor is going to demand all the power that it needs, but if your electronic speed control is not up to the task, guess what? That electronic speed control is going to end up in a fireball, letting all that magic electrical smoke out of it. And this is the ultimate thing that we must try to avoid. Same idea for the brushless motor if that's your, you know, big beast of a component in your setup. If you don't have the batteries that's really going to allow it to, you know, run very well, then you're going to end up with a system that is essentially only as good as your weakest link. So the same thing applies for all of the components within your power system and especially, you know, gearing is not the most expensive item on a radio controlled top speed run car. However, gearing of course adds to that system and because of this it is definitely one of the components that is very necessary to make sure that it is up to the task. I think the better question to be asked here is about your budget versus you know a high quality component or a low to middle ground quality component. And there's gonna be a lot of opinions here on what is best. I'm gonna share mine and I'm gonna invite all of you out there to share yours in the comment section below. What is that component that you should, you know, if you have the extra money, kick that money over so you can get a better quality component. Now I'm gonna share my piece, my take on this, and I'm gonna talk about two specific components. Now, of course, this does apply not to the guy trying to break records with a radio control top speed run car. If you're trying to do that, you're going to need to maximize every bit and piece along your entire chassis to make sure that it can handle the power and deliver the power. So we're not talking about, you know, you guys. Of course, if you're doing that, you already know this and we don't need to get into it. Now, if you're trying to get, you know, that first pass at 100 miles an hour or you're trying to exceed 120 miles per hour, then this is going to more or less apply to to you. The one component where I would get something better if I could, if I had the budget, than the rest of my system would be the lithium polymer battery pack. There's a few reasons as to why I would select the lithium polymer battery pack as the best component to put that extra budget money towards. And that is because it is the foundation of your power system. All the power starts at the battery and it's gonna be your bottleneck to be able to deliver all that power to the rest of your power system. One of the biggest things that we do see here on this channel is voltage drop. And I've seen significant amounts of voltage drop with many different lithium polymer battery packs. In fact, one of my setups, I start out with an 8S LiPo battery pack that is pretty well just shy of 30 volts nominal. And once I end up running it under load, it is near 21 volts or even lower when it hits that peak amount of current within the run. This shows us that we're losing nine volts of potential RPM, which is definitely bottlenecking the rest of the system. The brushless motor is up to the task and the electronic speed control is up to the task, but that doesn't matter because the battery pack needs to have a quality component there in order to actually be able to deliver. 
Now I do want to talk about the motor here if you're trying to go for that 100, 120 mile an hour run on why I would actually select the battery over the motor. The brushless motor, you can go with a budget brushless motor and even maximize the amount of size that you buy for that specific motor. A lot of decent brushless motors on the market will definitely get you 100 to 120 miles an hour. And the similar thing goes for the electronic speed control. However, you do need to be careful here because really when you're talking about the speed control, it's either a pass or fail. It either works or it doesn't. You plug everything in, you make a couple little you know, circles just to test things out right outside of your driveway. Everything looks okay. You go to make that first pass and it ends up in a big plume of smoke. And that's so obviously what we want to avoid. Really what you need here is an electronic speed control that is up to the task, up to the challenge of being able to deliver the total amount of current that you plan to run through it. And you can see exactly how good that electronic speed control is performing based off of the temperatures that it gets up to when it's actually in motion, when it's running, when it's under load, and you bring it back immediately. That's gonna give you a good idea, a good picture as to how hard you are pushing that electronic speed control. And then to circle back right to the battery pack, talking about the electronic speed control, you can actually increase the reliability of the electronic speed control just by making certain you have a good quality battery pack, one that can deliver the current. This is going to be a battery that has a really good C rating, and I'm not talking about the labeled C rating on the sticker that you find on the side of the battery pack. I'm talking about the actual C rating as found here on the channel when we measure LiPo battery packs. You Having a really good battery pack that can deliver the current to the electronic speed control is going to reduce the ripple voltage that you see in an ESC. And this is going to maximize the reliability and make it just that much more safer for you to run that setup. Last but not least, make sure you pay attention to your gearing. Start very slow and work your way up. This is what I see a lot of people not doing. So I'd highly recommend doing that. Start at a much slower speed and go up a few teeth at a time. This is how you can maximize the reliability and know that you're actually pushing the limit when you see that temperature difference through every stage in that game. Well guys, that pretty much does it for this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below letting me know which component you think is the best to select when you're under a budget and you want to put more money towards one of the components. As always, like the video if you like radio controlled top speed run cars. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in another video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.